Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. This episode is Lesson 10 of our look at the book of Titus. In the last episode, we were covering the qualifications of elders as found in Titus chapter 1 verses 6 through 9, and we discussed how an elder is to be sober and just. In this episode, we're going to look at two more qualifications. An elder is to be holy and temperate. Let's reread Titus chapter 1 beginning at verse 6. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayer. Here we find one of the qualifications for an elder is that they are to be holy. Now we often think of holiness as it pertains to God, His righteousness, He is perfectly righteous, His sinlessness, perfectly sinless. And we say, well, I can't be holy. This verse teaches otherwise. We can only be holy by the grace of God because we are not sinless. We have sinned. God has never sinned. But we are sinless if we have been granted the grace that God provides. He forgives us our sins and remembers them no more. That way we can be holy, consecrated to God. An elder is to be holy, is to exemplify this. An elder is to dedicate themselves to God. It doesn't mean that they can't have another job. That doesn't mean that. We find that in other verses that an elder, A, can completely uh, not have another job and the church is to support the elder. That's not a command. But an elder is to have his mind on things above. So often we get uh, preoccupied with the things of this earth that we forget about God. That we forget to do our studying in the Word of God. That we uh, take our religion less serious than we should. That's not to be what an elder is. An elder is to exemplify what it means to devote their lives to God, to devote their lives to righteousness, to devote their lives to being uh, as close uh, to the Word of God and attempting not to sin as possible. It doesn't make them self-righteous, shouldn't make them uh, so that we are holier than thou. But they are to devote themselves to the word of God. They are to study. That's the only way they can be watchful. Sober. As if they know what the word of God says. That's the only way they're going to be able to teach other people. If they know what the word of God says. They are to exemplify this. So that they can be an example to other people. And that they can teach. But they're also to be temperate. We don't often use this word either. But what this word means is they are to be self-controlled. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 25 through 27, 1 Corinthians 9, verses 25 through 27, Paul writes, And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they, uh, they, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one who beats the air, but I keep my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Back when we dealt with being the husband of one wife, I made reference to the point that some people uh, say that they are a one-woman man. In other words, that they don't have eyes for other women. And people who make this point say that you can technically be married to one woman, but not be a one-woman man. And I would agree with that. That you have eyes for other women, that you have affairs uh, for other women. But I made the point that if that was the case, they would be unqualified when it came to this qualification. When I was making the point that being the husband of one wife, I believe, really has more to do with divorce than it does uh, other things that people want to make it say. Being temperate means to be self-controlled. 
That means we are able to control our mind to not think upon things that we should not be thinking. We are able to control our tongue not to say things that we shouldn't say, whether it's whether cursing, whether it's taking the Lord's name in vain, or whether it's just not being quick to speak. Those are things that we need to control. And then it's to control our body, to not allow us and our body to do things that we are not to do. Self-control is tough because it's very easy to be out of control. It's very easy on television to watch things we shouldn't watch, to go on the internet and watch things we shouldn't watch. It's very easy to do those things. It takes effort to be self-controlled. But an elder is to exemplify self-control. They are to do exactly what Paul said. Paul was talking about people who do things to obtain physical things. You take a look at all of our sports athletes. They eat certain things. They exercise every day. They practice, they practice, they practice. Why? Because if you're in hockey, you want to win the Stanley Cup. If you're in baseball, you want to win uh, the World Series trophy. If you're in football, you want to win the Super Bowl trophy, the Vince Lombardi trophy. And if you're in basketball, you want to win the NBA championship trophy, the Larry Brown trophy. And to do that, they have to practice. They have to be self-controlled. Paul said, we have to be self-controlled, but we're not running to obtain a corruptible crown. We're running to obtain an incorruptible crown. And so we must control our body in, in everything. Control our eyes, control our mind, control our tongue. That's hard. But elders must exemplify this. They must be temperate, able to control, because if they're not, they're not able to shepherd the congregation properly. In the next episode, we're going to be completing our look at the qualifications of elders. We're going to take a look at one qualification that's found in the book of Titus, the last qualification, and we're also going to look at one qualification that's found in the book of 1 Timothy that's not specifically mentioned here, although it could be implied. And so we hope you'll join us for that episode. Perhaps you're listening and you're not a Christian. The brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the Word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. On behalf of the East End Church of Christ in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. For free online Bible-based material or to get directions to our meeting place, you can visit our website at www.eastendchurch.org. While there, you'll also find links to more of our podcasts, as well as links to the live broadcasts of our services. Should you have any questions about this or any of the other podcasts you may have listened to, you may leave a comment below or email us at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the next episode when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.